Hey guys, it's Mara. Um, in, in today's video, I want to talk to you about some tips and tricks on how to become a good phlebotomist. Or if you already phlebotomist, maybe this can help you out a little more. Um, and the first one is practice. So you are not going to become a great, superb, <laughs> super, super, superb phlebotomist overnight. I and mean, it takes a lot of practice. It takes knowledge. It takes um, making mistakes. You're not going to, you know, even just doing the different kind of sticks like uh, Venus sticks, heel sticks, finger sticks. Those take a lot of practice, especially um, heel sticks and finger sticks. So the more you do, the better you're going to become at it. You're, you know, maybe some people are lucky and like fresh out the gate. They're awesome. Um, but really, the more different kind of people you people you see, um, the more ways you can figure out what works for each type of situation and draw. So um, my second thing would be to ask questions. So if you're not sure about a test, um, you're not sure about like the order maybe a doctor put in or what kind of tube um, that the blood should be put in or a way it should be drawn, ask another person, maybe a person who's been there a little longer, or maybe ask a tech if you're a phlebotomist, if you're not sure, um, because, you know, that can be used to, uh, not make a mistake. Um, you can, you can save the patient another stick or, um, so they don't have to come back or maybe it was drawn at the wrong time and then they have to be stuck again. Um, really just, just asking questions can really save a lot of time and effort. Um, next thing is to double and triple check your test. So make sure that um, your, I mean your test, you want to check your birth date, you want to check your name. I always <laughs> Uh, I check it usually more than twice. I read through it, I read through it again, sometimes I read through it again just to make sure that, you know, name and birth date match. Um, the tests I ordered were the right tests, especially if the orders aren't already in the computer. Um, if they're already in the computer, our system, we just activate the orders and they come across to our system. Um, but a lot of times there's handwritten orders or there's printed orders um, and sometimes you might type in something wrong. And that's okay, but you know, if you double check, triple check um, your orders at the end, then you can you can save um, some trouble down the road from happening. Um, and that another um, tip I have is fake it till you make it. So if you are drawing a patient and you're not super confident about it, but you're pre, you know you think there's a vein there, I say go for it. Um, you know, if it's a little kid or something, you really don't want to try to stick them more than once. But at the same time, um, you want to have that confidence. Even if you don't have confidence, you want to act like you do. There's nothing worse than somebody coming towards you with a needle who's like not really sure, you know, <laughs> that just scares everyone. So, you know, have confidence, but if you don't have confidence, at least act like you have confidence, which I know sounds kind of bad. but. That's what I have felt I have figured out works the best for me in the beginning, especially when I wasn't super confident with um, phlebotomy and doing um, doing vein sticks, just to act like you've been doing this your whole life. And then the more confidence you act, then eventually um, you'll get that confidence. And that's kind of the same with life, I guess. You know, don't don't think you're the best thing, you know, that ever the phlebotom best phlebotomist that ever phlebotomist did. Um, you know, and act like you're all knowing, but at the same time, have confidence in what you're doing and your ability as a phlebotomist, even if you're starting out, which I know is hard, it's easier said than done. Um, but yeah, so confidence. Um, and next thing is when you are drawing a patient, um, if you are having trouble with your confidence, uh, talk about your good attributes not your bad. So if you're saying, oh, you know, I'm, I'm not good at this kind of draw or, you know, I'm not really good at hand sticks, don't talk about the bad things. Talk about the good things like, oh, I've done really good today with patients and, you know, you might not want to mention this is some of your first ones, 
um, but just say my record's really good with getting draws or everybody today I've had some I've had some hard draws but I've gotten them you know really talk yourself up because if you feel good about the draws you've done then your patient will feel good and they will feel that you are adequate in doing your job um, another thing is if you can't get a draw maybe say you stuck a patient or even maybe you didn't stick a patient, um, you can't really find any of their veins. If you have the ability, um, get a second opinion. So if you don't feel super confident um, in a draw, go ask somebody else, say, hey, but don't act like, hey, uh, I, I, don't, I can't find your veins. I don't know what we're gonna do. You know, Don't get upset. Just say to the patient, um, I'm not really seeing, um, a lot of veins that would be a good draw um, but let me go talk to one of our other phlebotomists or tech or whoever you have as backup uh, just say that I'm gonna go get a second opinion and come have um, a fresh pair of eyes come in and see if they see anything um, that they think would be a good spot to draw from um, and that way you're not talking yourself down you're just um, getting some reassurance which is good in um, the sake of phlebotomy. So, um, let's see. Another thing is to make notes. So, whether it's on how you order things, um, for me, I like to make a note, especially if a patient has a ton of tubes um, or a ton of tests to be drawn. I like to write down each color tube that I'm going to need um, before I go into the draw. So, let's say they had a glyc and a CBC and a CMP and um, my TSH and maybe a testosterone or something like that. So I know, um, or even if you don't know, you can talk to a tech and ask what kind of tubes they're going to need, especially if it's going to be a hard draw, what's the minimum amount of tubes and what's the optimal amount of tubes. Um, like I could do with a purple, a green, and a red top for those kind of tests. Um, but I could use, you know, an extra gold, say, if, if blood's a flow in, let's get extra tubes. And that's another thing I have. Um, draw extra blood. Now, maybe at your facility they kind of frown upon that. But I always say, you know, if they just come in for a CBC, I'll go ahead and get a little blood and put it in uh, the chemistry tube, so the green or gold. Just in case the doctor decides they want to add on some kind of test. Um, so usually for me, if they have chemistries, then I'll get, put some in a purple in case they want a CBC. Same for if they have a CBC, I'll put some in the chemistry tubes just to kind of, um, cover the, the bare minimum basics of, you know, hematology chemistry. Now I'm not going to be filling up blue top tubes normally, um, unless a patient comes in the ER and that's when we, um, draw like the rainbow color of tubes. If you guys want to see my video, I'll put that here at the end about those kind of tubes. Um, so that kind of gets everything. Um, but if say we just have like an outpatient or if I'm at the clinic, then I like to draw, um, you know, if it's hematology, chemistry, chemistry, hematology, just to kind of cover anything that they might want. Um, and the same for if they ordered a CBC and chemistry, then I'll already have the purple tube to run a glyc uh, or an A1C if they want that test too. So yeah, it's just kind of covering your butt, but I mean, it's just, it's trying to save the patient an additional stick, especially if the doctor decides they want to add another test on, you didn't get any extra blood um, or a different kind of tube of blood, um, and then they might have to call them back in. But if you already got the blood, then hey, you're safe. So. Not everyone draws extra blood, but I like to just, it's a habit. Okay, um, and my last thing would be to know what tests, or try to know what tests um, that a patient is getting tested on. So, I know, you know, the normal tests, um, and I even know some of the weird tests, but all phlebotomists don't know that. Um, and. I sometimes hate when a patient comes in and they're asking a phlebotomist, well, what is this test for? What is this test for? And they're like, I have absolutely no idea. Um, if you don't know, maybe ask a tech or ask another phlebotomist, hey, this patient um, was wondering what this test is for and I'm not exactly sure, do you know? Um, or 
you know, if you have time, you may not have time, um, but maybe look up these tests before you stick the patient so you know a little bit about them, especially the weird ones, not the, you know, CMP, CBC, A1C, uh, or ProTime or something like that. If there's some kind of weird um, antigen test or, you know, marker test, um, maybe look it up a little bit, in which I like to look them up in our online um, lab catalog to make sure I'm getting the right juice, you know. Um, a lot of times it's kind of on our on our requisitions that print out, it's not really specific on how much blood you're going to need, how much serum or plasma or what exactly kind of tubes you're going to need it to be put in. So I like to look them up online so I have a strict, I need a minimum of, you know, one mil of serum, but uh, the optimal amount is maybe three mils, you know, so you're, you know, you're going to need a, a bigger tube or maybe two, two tubes. Um, so yeah, look, look, kind of know what you're testing, what the requirements are, and so if the patient has any questions, I mean, we are not doctors, so we don't know maybe why the doctor ordered that test, but you can at least tell them what that test does because the patient has the right to know um, what they're paying for. Basically, it's a service. So if you guys have any questions, um, comment down below and I will try to answer them. Um, and thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I hope see you guys later. Bye.